We're going to fully break down the first training camp in Dragon Ball history in one of my all-time favorites, Goku and Krillin's training with Master Roshi for the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament. Let's go. After making a wish with the Dragon Balls and parting ways with the squad, Goku heads to Master Roshi's island to see if he'll train him. In the last arc, Master Roshi offered to train Goku after he heard he was Gohan's grandson because he actually used to train him too. But when Goku gets to the island, Roshi switches up on him and says he'll only train Goku if he brings him a girl he could have a date with. Goku brings him this chick. Of course that's not what he wanted, so he brings him another girl and Roshi thinks he just hit the jackpot. But a little bit of a closer inspection and he sees that she's a mermaid. Hey, he's still into it though. He literally says, I guess I can still have fun with the top half. Dragon Ball was crazy, bro. So he comes on too strong and the mermaid dips. Then we see that Goku isn't the only one who wants to be Master Roshi's disciple. A boy named Krillin, 12 years old, same age as Goku, pulls up to the island also looking for training. Roshi declines, but Krillin, again the 12 year old, gives the turtle hermit a stack of adult magazines to butter him up so he'd accept him as a pupil. And it works too. Also, let's pause here real quick. Why did Krillin have this in his collection? I'll let you guys decide in the comment section. Anyways, the magazines aren't enough for Master Roshi. He wants the real thing. So Goku and Krillin go looking for the right girl. Uh, got her. They end up bringing back Launch, a woman who has split personalities. When she sneezes, she changes from a blue-haired sweetheart to a blonde criminal who always has a stick in hand. Roshi's like, hey, she's the one. Mission complete. So for their training, the small island just isn't gonna cut it. So they pack up Kame House into a capsule and relocate to a much bigger island where the training can take place. Master Roshi's gonna test the boys out with the 100 meter dash. Krillin hits it in 10.4 seconds. Goku's gonna get 8 seconds flat and crush Usain Bolt's world record. But Roshi puts them both to shame with 5.6 seconds. And he was really rusty too. Let's fast forward now to the boys first official day of training. The alarm goes off at 4.30 in the morning. Roshi wakes Krillin up and tries to wake Goku too without waking up Launch, who sneezed in her sleep and changed personalities. She wakes up anyways and empties a clip on Goku for sleeping in her bed. Goku's pissed off and knocks her out cold with a head kick. Let's move on. The boys meet Roshi outside and he gives them a speech on how martial arts are to be used to defend peace only. And just a quick background on the boys. Krillin's been training since he was 4 years old in a place called the Oren Temple, and Goku's been training most of his life with his grandpa Gohan, but they've never experienced anything close to the level they're about to. They all start off with a jog to the local Shamrock Farms, and Roshi has the boys each grab a crate to deliver milk on foot in the countryside. The first house on the delivery route is 3 miles away, and they're gonna skip their way there. It's light work for Goku, but Krillin's already starting to feel it. They make their first delivery, and for the next house, they're gonna zigzag between the trees in this path for two miles. Krillin's trailing behind, and he tries to cheat himself by running straight along the path. Look at him, he thinks he's slick, but Master Roshi keeps him in check. They make a couple more deliveries and take a break from running before their eighth delivery, but not an actual break. It just goes from them running to them climbing these steps up this massive hill to deliver the milk to the house on top. I swear, the only reason this guy lives up here is so Goku and Krillin could switch up the routine. On the way up, even even Goku is starting to get wiped out. He asks Roshi if he could go up the mountain with the Nimbus Cloud and Roshi tells him oh, hell no. He motivates Goku by telling him his grandpa used to do this all the time and he never complained and it worked like a charm. Look at his eyes light up. He says I'll meet you at the top master. Then Krillin comes up struggling. Goku's thinking about how his grandpa would never stop and Krillin is motivated by not wanting Goku to humiliate him. They arrive at the top and deliver milk to this monk who asks Master Roshi how the training is going. He says it's early but these kids have potential and if they keep it up they might be ready for the world martial arts tournament 8 months from now. Krillin tells Goku about the tournament and how the best fighters from around the world show up every few years to compete and the boys are just pumped. So now for their training they have a specific goal and time frame which just hones their focus and drive to the max. But Roshi tells them they're not going into this just looking to win because they're still new to the game and thinking they should win right off the bat is just straight up arrogant. The tournament is supposed to be a mechanism for them to want to improve not for them to get an inflated ego. He doesn't want them to win it and say, well, I guess I'm the best in the world. No, he wants them to be real martial artists, real fighters, perfecting their craft their entire lives. Guys, you gotta see how influential this training is already. Think of Goku and DBZ how when he takes a loss, it's no problem, I'll come back and get the win. Somebody stronger than me? That's exciting. It's an opportunity for me to level up. Roshi's training was the building blocks for being this hyper competitive, but still humble which is a very difficult thing to do by the way. Now let's continue. Next up is them walking on a log standing over a large pit. 
When they get to the other side, they have to walk through these sand dunes, then walking through a stream with a heavy current. When they make it past the stream, they start getting chased by a T-Rex. After that, they deliver the last of the milk before breakfast time, and they make it back. They are cooked. But Roshi says, nah, that was just the early morning training. Next up is the mid-morning training. Look at the shock in their eyes. Guys, I know those of you who train martial arts or competed in sports know exactly what this feels like. When your coach makes you think you're done and hits you with the switcheroo. Nope, we got a lot left in the tank. For their mid-morning training, Master Roshi has them till the land of a field without any tools for the strength and dexterity of their hands. By the way guys, do not sleep on strengthening your hands, your grip. You don't ever want to give that awful, loose, disgusting handshake. But yeah, the boys are out here working like tractors. Once they finish with the plow, they take a much needed break to eat breakfast. Krillin goes a little too hard in the pepper and makes Launch sneeze and switch. She pulls out the machine gun and lights them up. Why did they let her have weaponry? So they go out to eat instead and they're scarfing down the food, as they should. After breakfast, their late morning training is them studying until lunchtime. Roshi wants them to develop a strong mind in conjunction with a strong body. And man, if you haven't watched the OG Dragon Ball in a while, give it a rewatch for the dialogue alone. It's so funny and out of pocket. They start off with studying literature and Goku reads from this book. Ooh, Susie, that tickles. What if they find us here, said Bill. But Susie did not stop holding his foot lightly in her hand. Then later when they're studying math, Krillin is on the board talking about some, and that means X would equal, wait. How do you spell X? D bro, what? So studying time is over and they scarf down some lunch. After lunch time, it's 12.30 in the afternoon and they take an hour to have a nap. Tell me this doesn't look so peaceful. After long, grueling work and then some study, you have a nice meal and take a nap in a hammock, under a tree, surrounded by fresh air and a light breeze. It's so beautiful. Then Roshi says the legendary quote, work hard, study well, and eat and sleep plenty. That's the turtle hermit way to learn. Goku asks him, what if while we're lying here, somebody else is training for the tournament, getting stronger than us? And Master Roshi tells him that even the strongest warriors need to make time for rest and recovery. Making a parallel to DBZ again, we see Goku use this kind of balanced approach in the Cell Saga during his training with Gohan in the time chamber. I'm telling you, this training is the building blocks. After their nap, Roshi takes the boys to a job site for their early afternoon training. They're going to be doing construction work without any power tools. Goku and Krillin are going nuts and the workers are in awe. Look at Krillin with the pickaxe. He's thinking about how he used to get bullied for being the little guy back where he used to train. And he's trying to break their jaws in the tournament, bro. After construction, for their mid-afternoon training, Roshi's going to have them swim laps around the lake. But they're irritated because they thought they were going to be learning new fighting techniques. But Roshi snaps at them and says he'll teach them new techniques after they can move this massive rock, which they can't. He just kind of picked that rock to get them to shut up. He's not going to tell them, but he doesn't actually plan on working on martial arts training. The boys already have good fighting fundamentals, and the purpose of this training is for them to build a really strong physical base. He's teaching them the importance of strength and conditioning, and plans on working techniques in the future. So the boys need to swim 10 laps around this shark infested lake. After that's done, he ties them to this tree and agitates a beehive so they get attacked by bees. He wants them to work on dodging in a limited space, and they're getting lit up. But when they finish, they come back to Kame House and their first official day of training is complete. Then Roshi tells them this is what they're going to do every single day for the next few months. Except, now they're going to wear these 50 pound turtle shells on their back while they do it. And that's not the only way they're going to progressively overload. As time goes on and they get stronger, the fields they run get longer and the mountains they climb get taller. Months pass and their determination increases, their appetite increases, look at them plate cleaners. One day they bring Master Roshi back to the rock he said they needed to be able to push in order for them to start their martial arts training and they've actually gotten strong enough to both push it. Roshi's completely shocked and he finally drops the bomb on them and says no 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 this is the training. The secret behind my martial arts is the physical training routine. Krillin questions how they're going to win the tournament without new skills. And Master Roshi says, remember, the point isn't for you to win this one, it's for you to grow. And besides, there's no point teaching you special moves until you get the fighting experience. So they're just going to continue the normal training routine for the tournament. Except, Roshi gives them 100 pound turtle shells to wear on their back now. 
back to the routine. So fast forward to the end of their training and Master Roshi tells the boys to take off the turtle shells and jump as high as they can and look they're flying. They can't believe their power and speed. Launch gives them these clean new suits to wear on their way to the city and the gang takes a flight to the island ready for the tournament. Such a good training camp. The only thing I would have changed is I would have replaced the part where they dodged the bees with some light sparring and drilling. I know the point of the training was the strength and conditioning. I'm all on board with that but I just think a little bit of skill work to keep them sharp should have been included. But other than that I mean I love this training. The mentality behind it, the structured routine, the beautiful scenery of the countryside, the way we see Goku and Krillin progress physically and mentally, and even just little stuff like them suiting up and going from countryside to city when it was time for the tournament. Such a good vibe, and really down to earth by Dragon Ball standards. That's it for the video guys, like and subscribe. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. See you soon.